Another thing that he says happens is people tend to lose the sense of sin. Well, isn't sin something that's instilled into man based on uh, religious beliefs? Yeah, d depending on how the faith that you might believe in uses sin t for control or, you know, discipline and... So sin is a, is a huge word in a third dimensional world. It's um, there's there's a sense of fear surrounding sin, and um, so when you develop this cosmic consciousness, you just kind of you lose the sense that sin exists because if if you're operating from a a place of love and compassion a, as a norm as as part of your being, then then sin is reduced or non-existent. There is no sin to begin with. Right, because... It's well, that also de redefines the meaning of the word God, too. It can, and as this, this, like we said earlier, as a cosmic consciousness movement grows, you might see people start to redefine the word God and what it means to them. And, and you know, it's, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. So, um, Another thing that he says happens is uh, people tend to have a sense of uh, moral elevation. It, it's not that they, they didn't have morals before, because I, he, in fact one of the things he says is they kind of are already predispositioned to, to, to have a sense of morality about them, but they, they just kind of, it, it's increased. They, they kind of see how having a, a sense of morality and you know, it kind of goes back to that, that take away of sin. And I think in a, our third dimensional world that the sense of morality is kind of a gray area. Leaning toward the dark side? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a lot of crime and a lot of it's associated, you know, there's different reasons for that crime. And so, but, you know, he says that when you get a cosmic awareness that you do tend to understand the, the role that mor morals play in, in the whole big, big picture of life. So. And, uh, well, morals, aren't they just, just saying this is right and this is wrong in this society? Pretty I mean, black and white, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you do this, this, these are the consequences. If you do this, these are the consequences. You know, do wrong, you suffer. Do right, you rejoice. But there tends to be a bit of gray area in between because a lot of people do wrong they suffer or are punished, but it doesn't solve the problem. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> As we see in our justice system, but that's another topic. So to move on. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> they say, he also says that um, someone that is open to receiving cosmic consciousness will already have a certain air about themselves, a certain charm to their personality. Um, they may already have a be able to attract people. It's just, you know, it's it's some could be like a charisma. Yeah, a charisma, a likability. Yeah, that's just kind of a natural thing that happens. And when they develop this sense of cosmic consciousness, they may find that people are even more drawn to them to to find out why they've changed and how they've changed. And well, as we discussed in previous shows, when this awakening occurs, cosmic uh, consciousness occurs with for you, you're going to gain friends and you're going to lose friends. And, you know, whether or not that's good or bad or indifferent, that's your choice. But be aware that that will occur. And it's all part of reaching that higher level of awareness, that higher vibration. And, um, and others might start seeing you different when you do start to vibrate higher. They might say that there's kind of a... Wow, there's been a change. What's different about you? That you almost have like a, a certain glow about you. Your aura might vibrate higher. and You just seem different. It's not that you might have changed anything physically about yourself, but you, as you release the burdens of life and release the fear and lack in your life, you just have a lighter aura about you. So. That's another thing that he says happens, and um, he, the, intellectually speaking, there, there, there are some physical, some changes that happen, 
you know, when you suddenly have this sense of knowing. So there might, someone who develops a cosmic consciousness might explore different things than they were used to reading about or researching. They might suddenly take an interest in in environmental things and, you know, become very conscious of how they live or and uh, take care of their body or their environment as as we have yeah and uh, you know they there might be a um, a change in some of their addictive behaviors and and just the perceptions about how they see things might change so that's something else that he says happens when this occurs it it could happen over time it's probably not something that happens right away but uh, one of the major things that he, he says that happens is um, the age at, at when this, it, people have experienced a cosmic awakening. And he calls it the age of illumination. And it's very characteristic of individuals between the ages of 30 and 40. And um, he says that, that they kind of already are predispositioned um, to have a high intellect, high morals, you know, they, they may have already been conscious of how they take care of their body. And they may have already had some type of um, religious training or followed a religious belief or, you know, maybe at one point had followed a religious be belief or that had fallen away. You know, they've kind of come back and forth exploring different religions. So, so the, there, there's kind of a characteristic of, a, of the person that... Uh, is open to receive a, a, a cosmic consciousness awakening. And um, he spent many years researching people throughout history up to his time that he felt had achieved a cosmic consciousness. And probably, I would say, most of his book is talking, his, his research where he names these certain individuals and discusses how he feels that they, through their writings or things that they experienced, how they, how they are also may have experienced a cosmic consciousness. And some of the people that he talks about in his book are, of course, um, you know, there's characters from the Bible, such as Jesus. Yeah, he states it as Jesus the Christ. Yeah. Uh, and Paul, uh, the Apostle, uh, Moses, and Isaiah, even Buddha. Mohammed, St. John of the Cross. He also talks about uh, philosophers during his time uh, and previous to his time, such as Greek philosopher Pontius, uh, Socrates, another Greek philosopher, uh, Francis Bacon. He was Sir a, Francis Bacon. He, <laughs> okay, he was an English philosopher. And there's one of my favorites, Baruch Spinoza. He's a 17th century Say Dutch that again. <laughs> And also Pascal, a, Fr a French philosopher. So, uh, and as well, he includes some poets in there. Dante. That's not El Dante, as you do noodles. Dante. Dante, the Italian <laughs> poet. He was from the Middle Ages. Uh, there's also William Blake, an English poet. Um, Balzac, a French novelist. Walt Whitman, he's the American poet. He's very well known. Uh, William Wadsworth an English poet, and there's also... Rolf Waldo Emerson. And, of course, Tennyson. Some of his poetry reflected uh, some cosmic consciousness. And one of the, another person he names that may have went through this experience is Henry David Thoreau. So.